Okay. Right. Uh, looking at alpha, beta, and gamma radiation, and trying to distinguish between the three of them. So if we give you a quick recap of how we should do it in theory, if I have three sources, alpha, beta, and gamma, me green and green, and I want to know which is which, what do I use to differentiate? Uh, Two ways of doing it. Uh, we're making yeah. them go three things. By making them go on two things, what should I find? So what about alpha? Alpha will just walk to a piece of paper. But it will be stopped by paper beta? Aluminium. So it will go to paper, it will be stopped by? Aluminium. Aluminium or maybe glass. And gamma? Concrete or lead. Or lead. So gamma will go through paper, it will go through aluminium, it will be stopped by lead. So you just test the three of them and to see which is which. Okay, so there's a little acted of it up here in the simulation, which is what we're going to do. It gets fairly complicated in practice for reasons we're going to see now. One of the things is, as soon as I put it up, Sean, up to a source, and here's my, let's say, my source up here, I'm sorry, my detector. I put a radiation source up to my detector, and I just move it back until I get no further counts on it. And it's no radiation is no longer being accepted, or, or is being detected. Is that the way it works? No. no. Why? There's always radiation in the background. So how far back do I have to go until I can ascertain that it's no longer? Until it's the same as what it was before you put it there. Until it's the same as what it was before. So before I do any of the this testing here, I've got to check what the background radiation is by itself. And if I just put this detector on here, you can hopefully, if it goes beep in a couple of seconds, you can hear the beeping there. Yeah. Actually, if you, can, if you can focus in on it there, John, you probably won't be able to pick up the sound. But every time that count goes up by one or two, you're getting a couple of beeps. So, we test it over three seconds, is it? We find the background rate over five seconds and then... No, no, no. How, how long? About an hour. Okay. And the longer you go, the more accurate it gets. But because it's random, you can't say if it was two ticks in this two seconds, it'll be two ticks in the next two seconds. So because it fluctuates, you want to get an average over maybe three minutes. So you take it the background rate over three minutes. Then as you bring your source further and further back, each time you've got to leave it there for three minutes and see how the total count compares to the background count that you got. Right? So that's the first complicating factor, is it's not that you will find no beeps when you bring it back so far, it's that the beeps will go back to background radiation level. The second complicating factor is the fact that it would be nice if all of these emitted the same amount of uh, beta or alpha particles per second. But alphas, betas, and gammas are the different sources. One is americium, one is called strontium, one is cobalt. They have one, they emit different numbers of <coughs> particles per second. What's the technical term for the amount of particles they emit per second? Activity. It's activity. So they've got three different activity series, or different activities. So if this guy's activity is very slow, it's going to be, if he might only have, let's say, two counts per minute. Now, if you're doing a background rate, and the background rate is three counts per minute, then you're hardly even going to pick up the extra activity rate due to this. So you'd have to measure your background rate over a long time, and you'd have to check this over a long time to make sure the difference is quite noticeable. So again, doing it in practice is much trickier than, do it, than doing it on a simulation here. Right? Um, and then the third thing, reason it's complicated, is because let's say this is uranium, and let's say uranium decays to plutonium and gives out alpha particles, and I want to check its, how, how much it can be detected by moving it back here. In going from uranium to plutonium, it emits the alpha particle, which gets detected. However, what I now have is a plutonium particle, and that plutonium particle, which is now probably in the air somewhere, can decay itself, and it might decay given off beta radiation, or beta particles. So I think I'm just detecting alphas with this guy here, but not only is it giving off alphas, but when it decays to something else, the something else gives off betas, and that interferes with the whole experiment. So you've got to try and find some way to differentiate that. So for, lot, for those couple of reasons there, the whole thing can be quite tricky. We'll do uh, the real thing here in a couple of minutes, but we'll just do a, in fact, I'll turn off the sound. We'll just see, it's a little bit easier to do it here. So I'm going to take away three different sources. I want to ascertain which is which. One way of doing it is just to put the mouse over there, and it tells me americium 241 is an alpha radiation source. Let's say we didn't know that. We put out our detector, which is there, we put out our source, which is here, and we turn it on. You're not yet checking now. Uh, yeah, we should be checking it against background radiation. In fact, as I, if I put that away, I turn that guy on. The count should go up. Yeah. So you can focus on the oh, yeah, command on So at the moment, it's just picking up background radiation. 
And what I've got to do is check that over a few minutes and then introduce a source. So let's say I set that back to zero, bring up my source here, and now as I start bringing this closer, I should know the count going up quite a bit from my alpha radiation. So there's, three, there's two ways you can use to determine the differentiate between alpha, beta, and gamma. One is to introduce a source. So if I introduce a source like this, my count obviously only goes up so <coughs> You see it going down quite a bit. Or if I introduce something like that, it stops. So the glass, that's not aluminium, but glass stops it. Not completely, but hopefully back to its background level. The other thing we can do is get rid of that, and we just bring it back. And once we bring it back even a few centimeters, once again, you're back to your background level, or what you hope would be background level if you did it properly. So you can look at the distance it travels, and in terms of its, the distance that the particles travel, what do we uh, refer to that as in the, in the notes? Stopping distance. Stopping distance, or alternatively, it's penetrating distance. How far it can go. Now, if it's only going a very short distance, if the stopping distance is very small, what do we know about its ionizing ability? It's very high. It's very high. So alpha has a high ionizing ability. It's got a short stopping distance. Okay? So we get rid of that guy. Put that away. We take out this guy here. Let's go back. Start and stop. This is, I think it should be beta radiation. Is it? A beta radiation source. So we can see we can bring it right in. We can bring it much farther back than the alpha. And it's still being detected. And at this stage, it looks like... Even if we go all the way back here, it's still be detected. So distance itself doesn't seem to be enough of a, doesn't give us enough information. So at this stage, we've got to introduce pieces of material. Paper makes no difference. Plastic, however, seems to be making a big, big difference. Right? So therefore, you can say, well, okay, it's going to paper, it's not going to plastic. Therefore, it tends to be data radiation. It would be nice if once we got to here, the background rate stopped also. But however, this guy seems to travel quite a big distance through the year. Okay, so that's the beta radiation side of it. And bring my count back to zero. And we go with the gamma source. That all the way up. As you can see here, it's got a lower activity than the beta. Because remember this guy here, the beta went up to a couple of 18,000 almost straight away. So this guy's got a lower activity, so you have to bear that in mind. If you bring it all the way up, all the way back, it seems to make no difference. So the second thing we've got to try is introduce sources. Paper seems to make no difference. Plastic seems to make no difference. So in this case, we put in that stone, that lead. Should be making a difference. Yeah, and in fact, we'll actually see that it does have to be fairly thick lead. And I don't think we can do too much else. We put the stone in there, and that's not making a difference. So even lead and stone aren't really uh, stopping it. Which would be, I mean, that would be a little bit embarrassing because ideally you put the lead in there and it stops and it's nice and simple. You can, choose, we, you can choose, choose different thicknesses of lead. Can I? Where? Uh, click mixed, I think. Ah. Uh, lead. Ah. <laughs> 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 it's, too close. It's, its activity is definitely dropping as it goes farther, or it's increasing as it goes closer. Yeah, and ideally the lead would stop it altogether. It should. When we do the real thing, we'll actually show with lead it will stop it. Okay? So I'm going to get out of that. We'll put the lights back on, and we'll look at the real thing.